Hello and welcome to episode one of Carvers and Creators. My name is Michael Mondragon and I'll be running the show and moderating comments. In the following weeks, we'll be putting this show uh, on our Carvers and Creators YouTube channel, as well as Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch. Uh, just look up Carvers and Creators. Let me introduce our uh, founding carvers of the show. He is carving out of Boston, Massachusetts. He is the 2019 winner of Outrageous Pumpkins on the Food Network. Please welcome Paul Dever. How are you How's today? How's everybody doing? Paul! Hey. Thanks for the clap. Thank you both. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. And uh, this is going to be a, a fun hour, hour and a half of carving. So thanks for joining. Um, and Paul Dever is at Dever's Customs on Instagram. Yes, I am. Uh, next up is a man that I'm celebrating 40 years of friendship with. He is carving out of Tucson, Arizona. He went to the finals of Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network. Please welcome Matt Harper. How you doing, Matt? Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing great. It's... Uh... It's nice to uh, have the contrast. It's 158 degrees here in Tucson, so it's uh, it's good to be inside carving as opposed to anywhere else right now. So, unless it's a beach, of course. I can imagine. Thank you for joining, Matt. We have two uh, guest carvers joining us today. Unfortunately, uh, one is still trying to uh, hook, uh, make a connection, um, but he is carving out of Raleigh, North Carolina. He works as a 3D animator uh, for Stadium Sports. Um, and, and I'm sure that helps him tremendously with his 3d work. Um, since he's not here, we're going to move on to Dan Miller carving out of <laughs> no, no. Oklahoma. <laughs> Dan's here. Dan's oh here. my gosh. I mean, I mean, no, no, no. I no. blew it. Dan, yeah. I no, blew no, you're it. right. <laughs> Jim's here. Dan's not here. Oh so my go. god! There we go. It's my fr that that is that is first first episode jitters. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> I, I I'm so, I'm so sorry, Jim. Um, okay. I, I've got two first names. I answered to anyone. You can call me Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I got it out of the way. I I got the the first error of the show. That that that'll happen. So thank you so much for joining us. How is uh how is North Carolina? Uh, is it uh, humid? I can imagine it is. Just a little muggy. I'm, I'm going to go with it's nice to be inside. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Well, and of course, Dan Miller, Dan Miller Creations. He will be on as soon as he gets a good, uh, good internet connection. And uh, we can't wait to uh, see more from him. All right. So I'm going to step out and I'm going to let Matt and Paul um, do the carving and the conversation. So let me switch the configuration here. All right. So... Um, all right, go to it. Uh, the conversation and the carving is now yours. All right, let me start it off here. I want to ask Jim, what do you have planned for tonight? Because I know you get off to a fast start usually. <laughs> I don't know about that. But, they shape it very um, fast with you. I've never done a chimpanzee before, and I just love their faces. So I'm going to sort of try and do something along those lines. You know, lots of good wrinkles, lots of uh, expression. So. Ooh, we'll we'll there. start out there, and if it goes south, then you know who knows. Hey, it becomes a monster. Exactly. We'll so you are you going to go for ears and all that as well? Uh, probably not uh, within the time limit, but uh, eventually, yeah. For the for the final sculpt, I might pull the ears out of the back here and stick them on here. Oh, very cool! I can't wait to see that. How about you, Paul? What are you making today? Um, Looks like you got I a good start. Yeah, as usual, I like to basically make a face and then copy it. So ah, it's it's like a butternut squash version of me. <laughs> it happens. You, yeah, it happens to the best. I actually, um, it, it's one of the best ways to get the expression right. I, I use my kids or I'll take pictures of myself and the worst, and I carve based on that, and then I immediately uh, get rid of that picture because they're usually pretty bad. Right, but then you got to remember to go to your delete folder, the you know, delete yeah. photos folder, because they kind of hang around. <laughs> Sadly, yeah, my kids find those and then they put it on their on their feed. Right. Well, there's Dan. I'm back. There he <laughs> I'm is. On better, better internet. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, I guess I'm behind on carving now, huh? Yeah, <laughs> now, now you got to really move. What What are you planning on making? 
Oh, I'm gonna make an evil clown. Right on. Oh, all right. I like it. I was watching you cross. You turned it upside down, and that kind of inspired me. Nice. Right. Well, I just want to say thank you to you both for joining Matt and I on this very first trial run. Mickey, thank you as well for uh, moderating and getting this all together. You're uh, opportunity. We were very, Thanks, Matt man. and I were very happy carving on Instagram, but realized there's too many cool people out there that we would like to carve with and get to know. So this is a great opportunity, I think. Yeah, and for me, for me, it's like, uh, I, I think we all discovered that we can do this Zoom slash, you know, multi -pe multiple people all at the same time kind of thing a lot easier now that, you know, we, we are all quarantined anyway. But um, it, it's it's taken off, and I, I love what this has become because it's uh, it's actually something I look forward to now. I, I would have never gotten near the amount of practice I've gotten in the last few uh, few months, really, without uh, hanging with you guys and, and having some fun place to sculpt. I agree 100% on that. Definitely keeps you tuned up. Yes. Yeah, I think I think I've I've done I don't know I mean I uh, I've done probably twelve or more of these um, squash I think before I've done over the last five years maybe six so certainly has helped. Do you think do you think you've only done twelve? I feel like you've done about twelve hundred. I know I. You've been down. You've been down a week. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe more than twelve, but still, um, it's labor of love. But they're getting better and better, man. They, you come up with the coolest stuff. It's very impressive. Thank you, doctor. Doctor, today's today's guy was inspired by a band aid, so I'll just kind of move this so you can see it. So I, I really want to do somebody with a, a band aid on his head. Um, yeah, I guess I can move it out of the way here. And uh, so I got this guy who'd been in a fight, so he's got a nice puffy eye. I'm working on. Uh, like and um, maybe maybe a busted out tooth and so some stitches. So it's under under construction, but I'm trying to figure this one out. Sweet, like it. When did you stop that? Like a half hour ago, Matt? <laughs> no, no, but just as soon as the camera started rolling. So I don't know. I'm just really quick. He's so fast. <laughs> He's fast, guys. It's crazy. Oh, you stop it! I know you. You and I started these yesterday. All right, let's be transparent. Yeah, it's a, one of us did. The other one just started five minutes ago. Like I said, yeah, five minutes ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, the, I don't know if uh, I don't know if Dan and Jim know the the way that we ended up starting some of these um, things. It's a pretty funny story. You want to tell them, Paul? Sure. Yeah. Embarrassing as it is, I yeah. had <laughs> it. I had carved earlier in the night and. Um, had a couple of beverages and was tired and was about to go to bed. And like anybody that's addicted to their phone, I figured I'd check Instagram one more time. And I saw that Matt was carving live. So on my way in to lay down, I clicked the button and was watching the feed and figured I could fall asleep watching him carve, carve a squash. And this little icon <laughs> came up that said, would you like to join the feed? And I had never watched a live feed before. So I thought, why the hell do I need permission? To keep watching this so i said sure i'll hit it and then as i'm lying there <laughs> my face pops up on his live stream and he said oh hey paul so he's like, oh shit i got i got i gotta make it look like i'm lying down doing something. so i ran back downstairs and i think we ended up hanging out and talking for it might have been two more hours right it might have been two more sessions yeah we kept it just yeah, we problem. Away. yeah. so that was that was what happened and then you know the world turned upside down with the pandemic and then it was like well why wouldn't we just carve every chance we get yeah i think i caught the tail end of that first session of yours oh really i didn't hit the join button though no <laughs> you were lucky. yeah you were smart i mean it was it was the happiest mistake i i made it was like, it worked out great but <laughs> that was terrifying well i i learned not to do it after you did it i i, I kept looking at that thing going, what, what what do i have to do that for I, I was on a ray villafane one at one point i'm like wait i have to click on this and then luckily i remembered you did it so you saved me some embarrassment 
good. You know, that's what it's all about. I'm just trying to help people out. Same yeah. Exactly. You're, you're a Samaritan. That's, yeah, some might say. That's one word. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was, that was something. Yeah, so uh, is Oklahoma as bad as Texas right now? Oh, I don't think – is Jim? No, Jim's on, but I don't see uh, – Dan. He'll, he'll probably jump in and out. He's got a back. Okay. Right. Yeah, because right now Arizona, Florida, there's a few states that are just exploding. So yep. – I don't know yeah. if they're going to do another shutdown or not, but uh, in fact, maybe we just don't talk about that crap. Let's just, uh, I'll stop. Let's just talk about things that are fun. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. I'll take the one one demerit right out of the gate. Way to bring down the party, Hopper. That's right. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? I did have a surprise for you, buddy. Let's see if you recognize one of these. These were sent to me by a good friend of mine, Jimmy Neal. Out in Arizona, do you recognize this label? Triple uh, Tombstone. Oh, is that is that from Tombstone, like the, the town? Tombstone, Arizona. Yeah. Oh wow! Holy crap! Oh, you never Look had at you. No, oh, I'm a well-traveled man. I see that. My God, nice. That's actually uh, that's actually more than I do when I get when I buy beer. It's like. Uh, it's the old macro brews, typically. Well, like this, I think oh, we you're not allowed to share the label. Are we? But you're more of a you're a craft beer guy, right? I mean, that's pretty much your thing. Paul, did I did I say something wrong, sir? We lose Paul. There you go. Oh, here he comes. There you are. Did you lose me? For a second, yeah. All right. Well, cheers. Yeah, to the first episode. We, we... Can't say we missed you, but we did. you're back. I was there the whole time. Oh, well, cheers. So, yeah, it's actually hot here today as well. It's going to be muggy and 90 degrees. You guys have, like, thunderstorms just today, right? Yeah, we had some pretty good thunderstorms, actually. Uh, it feels like it's going to do it again today. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, we could use some rain here instead of just what in the desert? Know, the surface of the sun. Yeah, <laughs> that we call home. Sedona, I heard, is like the most one of the most beautiful places in the world, though. It I is. Get out it's there. pretty nice. You still coming out in the? Yeah, that's the plan. The plan is to still get out. Over. Yep. Um, All right. If you guys can get your uh, state under control with the vid, you know, that's, that's the thing. Massachusetts figured it out. Hey, you know, just give us a look, give us an extra day or two. We'll be fine. Right. You guys will be all right. We'll figure it yeah, out. One, one would hope. So Jim, other than these these um, live carvings that you've been joining with us, have you been have you been um, carving right along, off like you know as, as practice? Well, you, you saw uh, was playing with the uh, the chainsaw the other day. So oh, that's right, that's right. I can't believe it. I, I can't I'm let Dan have it. Really but yeah, it's, I mean, that's that's something that uh, some of these uh, there, there's a number of the pumpkin carvers that do the. Uh, do the chainsaw and... carving too, and uh, it was interesting. And it's sort of, you know, one of my weak points is I, I go in for, you know, these shallow cuts. I don't go deep enough and, and have enough uh, relief to what I'm doing. And boy, when you're working with the chainsaw, you don't have any choice. You have to get in there and cut and uh, go mm. deep and get the expression. So I'm hoping that transitions from, you know, timber into uh, pumpkins and squash here that I can get a little bit more bold with my cuts oh, that's great now how long have you been doing that the chainsaws last week <laughs> <laughs> oh huh. that was wow. the first one you're an old pro oh yeah so i, I what do you, you uh because i have a like a rational fear i mean i wouldn't say it's irrational it's a chainsaw but i really don't enjoy them um did you did you find that the chainsaw was uh tough to handle did you get any kickback well i i 
I chickened out. I went with an electric just so uh, it wouldn't uh, auger in too deep really quick and, re, you know, hog out a lot of material so I could sort of subtly go into it and, and at a better speed. But uh, for some of the detail work, I, uh, I used a grinder. Really? An angle grinder. And one of the attachments is basically a, a round chainsaw attachment that goes on that thing. And that I didn't like. That's the scariest tool I've ever had. And that's going to get parked on the shelf. Grinder, yeah, grind is a no joke. Yeah, you've got a chainsaw about, even with the guard, it's only about an inch or so from your finger. And so one good kick and, you know, you can only count to nine. Yeah. So You can't even give somebody the middle finger anymore. Nah, so, but it, it was interesting. It's fun. going to try it again. You guys ever try it at all? Electric. That's Never. about it. I, I pulled the same move as you, Jim. I um I actually, you know what I did is I started one out of a stump and I I I went to a chisel. I went to the old way, which took extremely, extremely long. I started out with that, uh, just because you know, before I picked up the chainsaw or anything, I wanted to because it was an old pieces of a gum tree we downed here. And we had those sections lying around, so I wanted to see, you know, what the what the wood was like. Was it stringy or, you know, bouncy, moist, or, you know, if it was dry enough to go and play with. So I went in with a chisel on another section and played with it. And uh, about three blisters later, I said, okay, we're, we're breaking out the chainsaw. <laughs> get, the get the power tools. Yeah, they're uh... – is that, is that very hard wood, gum, a gum tree? It sounds, it sounds, it sounds it's chewy. It's it's got a little bit of a little bit of give to it, but uh, you say it sounds chewy. You got to work on it a bit. Yeah, I wasn't expecting yeah, I, that much labor to get into it. I think that's probably why everybody uses chainsaws, right? Yeah, You're gonna do something sizable. Get it in, get it. Yeah, done. How about a, get a Dremel, Paul? I think that's the next. You know, I get Dremel and just get, get out there and carve a uh, whole totem pole out of it with a Dremel. Take two nice couple of every, every Dremel bit I have, I destroyed on on the, the wood outside. <laughs> I just le I lean into it like it's gonna be a, a squash. I, I, I just gotta realize you're gonna go a little bit slower so you don't burn the bits out. There's just smoke oh, coming. Yeah. Out <laughs> That's awesome. Nothing wrong with a little ambition. Right. Yeah. Well, a little impatience when you're like, just get in there, damn it. <laughs> I'm going to stick with ambitions. So yeah, right. A little more positive. Now, I'm going to throw – I'll throw this out there to anyone who happens to be enjoying the carving with us. So if you are and can comment or want to comment, go ahead. We'd love to see if we can see it, number one. But also if, um, if there's questions you have related to pumpkin carving, to sculpting in general, uh, we'd love to hear it and just uh, and have fun. I mean, this is – really pretty open forum. We usually just jaw around for the, the whole time, give each other a hard time, have a couple of sips of beer. But um, if there's something you want to know, throw it out there and we'll um, certainly answer it to the best of our ability. No, back to the action. Back to the, uh, back to the scraping, pretty much. Yeah, I, uh, I was told uh one time that people think this is kind of an asmr type of thing and i had to look up what asmr was, I was yeah my i have a buddy where this is the best thing ever for that. <laughs> i'm like you know uh, i i kind of get into some of that cutting of styrofoam and stuff like that it is it's kind of weird but fun it does i mean it sounds pretty good i don't know if i'd fall asleep to it is that really the? I guess I guess it's just that I've seen videos where it's just satisfying. Like there'll be a construction line and there's people very skillfully putting down bricks or something like that. And it, yeah, it's. I guess it, it, it interests me enough to sit there and watch the damn thing. I guess that's that's something. So Jim, did you sketch this out in ZBrush? I know you're a big ZBrush guy. No, just uh, printed a rough. Oh, oh, you're even gonna do that kind of self-portrait. Hey, thanks, Danny. Yeah. We're gonna have to get you Danny on there. Kissel. 
Danny joins us. All right. Thanks, man. I like that photo too. That's pretty, that's a pretty ambitious, um, elf. Yeah. That's, I can't wait to see how that comes out. It's a, it's a rough reference. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> All yeah, right. So Matt, this tombstone, right? Yeah. It's a, um, it's a triple IPA. It's no joke. Okay. It's uh, it's pretty strong. How far is tombstone from you? Uh, an hour, maybe a little, yeah, about an hour. It's so, don't forget, a tombstone, like the movie, is where they okay Corral is and Boot Hill and all that good stuff. Um, that's where, you know, uh, I'm your Huckleberry and he throws the thing around. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's not too far. And, you know, when you come down with the family or whatever, we can probably just take a quick day trip down there. It's, it's fun to see. It's, it literally is an old west town and, um, not a whole lot going on other than that, but there's a place called Big Nose Kate's down there. It's a saloon that was apparently there a long time ago too. And it's uh, it's like you just have to go get a beer there. And the kids can get like sarsaparilla or whatever yeah. you call it. So yeah. it's uh, it's super fun. Worth doing. Definitely. And then right south of that is a little town called Bisbee, and it's uh, also super fun. I've heard of Bisbee. I don't know why. Is there something in Bisbee? A reason I've it's an it. old mine. It's an old mining town. Um, it's it's hard to. It, it literally built into the side of the mountains in this big valley, and uh, it's just a really cool old historic looking place. It's pretty fun. Nice. And they got little breweries in there. They got you know live music. Uh, the band I play in, we've played there before, um, and these really divey bars. But that's the magic of it, you know. Nice. Have you do now? Do you? With your band, do you guys play out a bunch of times per year? Or is it just sort of unspecial? We were kind of averaging like once a month. Um, sometimes we do two or three shows a month and have, you know, a lull for a month or two. But So it's just as, you know, as needed, kind of as places. Uh, again, this is all ancient history at this point. You know, who knows when live music will start again. But for a long time, we, it would just, we get to play uh, at the fun Divey bars and just have a great time. Oh, that's cool. We actually got to play last weekend for the first time since all this started. Awesome. Yeah, we um, we were all at the same campground, so they, um, they hired a big sound guy, a big sound system to come in, and everybody socially distanced on the beach. And then, ah. They're on the water. A lot of people stayed in the water. It was pretty cool. Just fun that's to play. Cool. So tell her I know. you guys play. What instruments? The drums. I'm a drummer. And Matt? I play the drums. I'm not a drummer, but I play the drums. I'll cut it off. I've heard you play. You're very good. Uh, not, not, see, I the, this stuff I play uh, is just kind of dirty rock and roll and, and uh, pretty metered out. There's a couple fills now and then, but the stuff you play is technical. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not... Uh, you actually have to have skill for what you do. I'll stop it. I'll stop it. I heard your album is great. Dan, do you play anything? Don't say the chainsaw because Jackal's got that covered. Wow, good reference. Holy crap. Oh, thank Pull, you. Pulling a, do you remember the name of the song? Showing my age there. Yeah. Do I know the name of the song? No, I, I am impressed that I remembered it was Jackal that played the chainsaw. So. Yeah, okay. We'll just leave it at that, yeah. Yeah, that's that's terrible. Oh, Dan's still not even on. Jim, what about you? Oh no. You I, know, I, man, this uh, thing has more musical talent than I do. Oh, I thought I thought for sure you would have been playing something, guitar or something. I took uh, I took uh, piano lessons. I was forced to take piano lessons when I was young, and uh, I could find middle C. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's how you start, though. That was after two years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Meant, I guess. So, you know, I don't want to bring Mickey into it because I know he wants to hang in the back, but Mickey, were you a wrestler? Did I see something that you were we a gotta, wrestler? We, we got to bring him in on this. This is great. Paul, Paul did you, did you I find have... out my secret identity? I saw it. Are you, are you like the what, something of the Copacabana? 
<laughs> um, uh, to make a, uh, a long story short, uh, I was a professional wrestler from 1999 to, um, to 2010. Wow. Uh, I wrestled around the world. I wrestled in, uh, uh, Japan, England, Germany, uh, Alaska, Hawaii, uh, California. I was on an MTV show, um, called wrestling society X in 2006. And I've wrestled a lot of the guys that are now in WWE, uh, you may or may not know them. Uh, but yeah, that was, uh, that was my life, uh, for, uh, since I moved out here to uh, Los Angeles in 97. Yeah. That is amazing, dude. Yeah. I wrestled in Mexico <laughs> tell, tell on, me, on a couple shows. Tell me your handle. Tell me, what, oh, was, your, what uh, was your character? My, my, uh, my character was Disco Machine. Uh, disco I Machine. I wore a mask <laughs> and, and I carried a disco ball and it, it got me a trip around the world as a rock star. So that yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Were you, were you a good guy or a bad guy? A uh, little bit of both. There's people that liked me, but, um, you know, as someone who gyrated around and had fringe on his shorts, uh, <laughs> Uh, I was pretty, I was pretty well, not liked. Um, and as you know, like a lot of people, you know, death to disco, uh, disco's dead. There's a lot of that. So it was yeah. a very easy character to hate. Um, but it, uh, it, I also endeared myself to people as well. So it, it was really great. It's, uh, uh, I actually started late. I actually started when I was 29 doing it and I actually wrestled in my forties, which is kind of crazy in itself. Uh, a lot of the guys that do it are usually in their twenties. So, uh, yeah, so, and there's no money to be made unless you, you're really good at it and you de dedicate your life to it. But, uh, I had, I had a real job. I'm, I'm a graphic artist and I've been there for 30 years. So, uh, yeah, it was much easier on the body, but I was glad I got a chance to do it as Matt knows that, that, uh, we, I mean, we, we used to watch wrestling back when we were like early teenagers. So it mm -hmm. for me, it was just kind of like fulfilling a dream and, uh, because I was uh, technically smaller, I got I did more of the like the gymnastic type of thing. So, so it was fun. It, it definitely is. It's something like Paul just said. It, uh, your your superhero identity is eventually re revealed. <laughs> <laughs> it's I I thought it was awesome when I saw I saw the picture and I'm like, oh my god, he was a professional wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> well, professional uh, implies I got paid. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which th there wasn't a lot of money to be made, but it, it was definitely one of those things that, um, you know, the money that you got and the experiences that you got. And I actually owned uh, a company called Pro Wrestling Guerrilla that is the largest West Coast independent promotion right now. I left it, um, but I started it. So I, I have, my, so I cool. have my mark in professional wrestling, if nothing very, else. Yeah. Very cool, man. Uh, you know what I love about that story? It's like the same thing that... Um, it, that I've, we talk about it sometimes with the, um, you know, while we're carving and stuff, it's like, why not try it? Why not, you know, take a shot at doing something? Um, and, and it, you know, it may lead to something, it may not. I mean, like, even this show, I mean, like, we're, we're just having fun talking, you know, getting a little audience together and, and see where it goes. But, you know, I love that because, it, you know, you can look back in 30 years, you know, with grandkids sitting on your lap and say, you know, dad was wrestling in Osaka that day and, you know, what, you know, grandpa, yeah. but I, I just, it, it's, it's, it's just a great overall thing. Just keep, you know, keep trying everything and you never know where it leads. Well, yeah. one, of, one of the other things too, is that, I mean, I'm sure you guys can all relate to this is um, my artwork and my, my, my artistic talent um, basically got my foot in the door of doing that. So mm -hmm. like, all these people needed like t-shirts and they needed websites and they needed uh flyers and so like that was all my passion so i'm like sure i'll do all this and it was basically the way that uh i got trained and uh i was able to huh. trade it'll trade services as it were and then through those connections i met people so it's much like you guys i mean um that that's how that's how this kind of works and then people see you doing it they're like oh i need that i need that so um, it just kind of, uh, I got the right connections to all this stuff. And then I started do, just doing it more and, uh, yeah, never looked back. Dude, that's I amazing. still regret, I still, I still regret meeting Paul though. I have to admit. <laughs> and next week it's going to be Carvers and Creators with just Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the Paul show. 
I'll just cry about how you teased me on the first show. No, that that, that was a great happy accident, man. It was such a yeah. been, we've had such a good time over the last couple of months just carving. And and like uh I don't know, I think we've all kind of said it, right? I wouldn't have been carving right now. I don't no ever like during the summer months, think even think about carving. Somebody's like, "Well, why don't you do a watermelon?" I'm like, "Well, because I don't. I do pumpkins." Yeah. And now all of a sudden, I'm carving everything I can get my hands on. So, speaking of that, we should do on a future episode. We should like have uh, audience pick what we're going to carve. Um, <laughs> I've carved. That's a dangerous. I mean, I, it is. It is. I guess we can have parameters, right? We'll call it. A, it has to be a piece of produce, and as opposed to something else, but. Um, but I, I think that'd be super fun um, because I, I've gotten to carve like crazy things. Like, I mean, between yams and avocados and uh, celery roots and potatoes and all kinds of other fun things. But, um, I mean, it'd be really fun to have, to try something even more bizarre. Have you ever tried a watermelon? I know a lot of people have, but. A couple times. Yeah, it's, it's very different. Um, it's obviously very wet when you start carving into it. But then yeah. there's. You can't really scrape like we're doing here, you know. No, you, you not. It's not that. From what you, yeah, you just gotta you gotta cut. Yeah, absolutely. So it's very weird, uh, different, different. I'd be do. I'd do it again. Man. Yeah. Oh, that's the right though. Well, Mister Hopper. Jim, what about you? Do you um? Other than say these these butternut squashes that we've been gorging ourselves on the last couple of months, you carve like watermelons or anything like that? Not really. Uh, pumpkins, uh, these the the squash. Uh, just tried my luck at trees, and uh, other than that, I, I've been starting to play with clay a little bit, some monster clay, doing some little figurines here and there. What do you think of the monster clay? Uh, the I've got like the medium, and uh, you like it? yeah, it's uh, I'm just doing small things right now, uh, but it's it's a little bit waxy, which is nice. Uh, it you know it doesn't, I don't have to worry about the the heat from my hands to make it as soft like some of the plasticines or anything like that. But uh, I'm I'm not exactly a connoisseur yet of any of this. I'm still sort of new to the whole sculpting thing, but uh, it's. It's educational that, you know, one sort of leads into the other and little tips and tricks that you pick from clay, you can you can apply to pumpkins and to trees or whatever. So just any anytime you're doing 3D work and, and work in that extra dimension, it's great. Yeah, I agree. Anything. Uh, it's just especially if you're working subtractively, right? You look, we're basically working in negative. So a little less forgiving. I, I, I have a little bit of a learning curve when I go back. Like I almost forget how to add. You, you almost take it for, I take it for granted that you can add stuff. You know, with the once you heat up the monster clay, you can just make whatever you want. Where I'm so used to doing doing it in reverse that I almost want to just make a blob and then cut it all away. I've done that. Yeah, that's that's. I'm the same way. I've I've struggled with doing additive stuff. I mean. I, just curse at it after a while, but I, I've done it where I put a giant mass together and then just kind of look at it from different angles and go, Oh, there's an eye. Okay, that's a tooth. There's something, right? Any preference in the clay for you guys? Say it again. Any preference in the clay? I like the monster clay medium. Yeah, I've, I've used that. It's it's it holds really, really tight details. Obviously, um, it also I've used air clay, uh, air dry clays before. Um, but inevitably that stuff cracks. So, um, if you're not going to do a quick mold of it, um, it's just going to dry out at least in Arizona. What would you use that? For? Can you make like pots of stuff, the pots and things like that out of it? What would you use that for? Yeah. I, I made like, um, uh, like, um, uh, heads and I made this big lumpy guy with big warts and stuff like that and painted it and just to, just to try it before and, and uh, again, it just sits on my desk, so I don't really have uh, any real use for it. But it was it was just an experiment. Oh. 
I have uh, when I think of air dry clay, it makes me think of when I was a kid and you could buy those air dry play doh kits. Oh yeah, I'm talking about. Do you remember those? Yeah, they had oh, a yeah. Yeah. smell. Remember the smell? That's what I remember about it. It's probably the most toxic thing for you. Yeah, but back then it didn't matter. Yeah, we were just you know. Right, you make like little Smurf statues and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I certainly, I certainly, I mean, I, I follow so many people on that are really crazy good artists. I, you know, I can't hold a candle, but I, I love watching uh, some of the time lapse stuff with um, with Clay because it just, you know, it's my mind goes the opposite direction. I just want to carve into it, and they're adding so expertly. It's like they have a picture of it in their mind, same way I do, but the other direction. It's just weird. Right. So Danny asked a question uh, if we had started our sculptures before. Yeah, we started them the night before. <laughs> we started them last night just to to give a, something to look at, really. Uh, Danny, you know how it is. The first couple the first couple hours are really just scratching away to rough it out. So we figured it would be a good idea where we're going to keep this about an hour and a half to uh, make it the home stretch on some of these. <laughs> well, we did rip through them, I'd say, last night, right? Would we stay on for like an hour? Yeah, I think it was just nervousness of being on live today that was helping fuel us. But, uh, um, yeah. Oh, I, we were just talking about additive. And uh, Kristen Eagles, one of the probably the most talented cake people I've ever met. Um, she's amazing. Just she's watching. And thank you. And and she, she says everything she does is additive. Obviously, it starts with a cake, but. If you guys haven't followed her, Kristen Eagles, she is probably, it's it just staggering what you, she comes up with and her ideas for like uh, her cakes. And you, you look at it 50 times, you're like, that's not a cake. That's clearly a giant 50 pound steak or a, or a tennis shoe or a, I mean, an unbelievable facial sculpture. She's, anyway, I'm, I'm in awe. Yeah, she's pretty she's amazing. Tremendous. She's pretty damn amazing. I don't even think I could bake the cake, to be honest with you. Every time I bake a cake, it comes out wrong. Yeah. <laughs> They're always, always dry and gross when I do it. All so the instructions in the box, but it still comes out wrong. <laughs> I think that's that's blasphemy to, to a purist bake cake maker. You know, can't use yeah. a box. I don't even make pancakes if it doesn't say just add water. There you go. I did make a cake once. I, I shouldn't lie. I did try a fond, try my hand at a fondant cake once. That was tough. Oh, my buddy Rick. My buddy Rick just in. Hey, Rick. Um, Rick. Rick married an artist. Speaking of artists, uh, she's a tattoo artist. Okay. Actually, she's an amazing painter and and uh, designer. But she got into tattoo, and it's otherworldly as well. It's like you look at it and like if that's on skin. Um, anyway, I'm just. Uh, there's so many examples of how art, you know, just completely can just blow your mind. And uh, it's been a real fun thing to just peruse everybody's uh, growing uh, bank of new artwork uh, throughout this whole COVID BS. Um, I guess if there's one positive thing, right? Who called? Somebody called it the, um, the COVID renaissance. I heard somebody. Oh, I like that. But, right? Not too far off. Yeah, that's true. But somebody was saying that this is like so many, so many people are stuck in the house trying to be creative, and you have such a good outlet with social media that this is the second, you know, the pandemic renaissance. Go back yeah. a step. You're talking uh, ink. Who's got ink? Any tattoos? I've got there? a. I got a couple. We How got you. Tasmanian devil on your calf or something that? No, it's um, it's Garfield. It's you know, the whole cast of Garfield all across my back. <laughs> in a in a bobble wire in, hand. In a, a big pan of lasagna. It's the whole thing. It's like <laughs> I was a big fan. Odie and <laughs> I got Odie. Yeah, I got the it's the mailman. Jim, you all tattooed up? Not a bit. Me neither. 
Not even one. Come on, it's just skin. You guys wait, you know, who cares? Uh, I'm too anal retentive. I just don't like oh, you can take. Don't you guys, uh, you know, you've got your artwork lying around your office wherever. Don't you walk by it and sort of pick at it and go, I could have done that better. I'm going to do that next time. It, you know, that that sort of attitude. Yep, I do. I actually get totally. bored looking at stuff and I like put it away so I don't have to stare at it anymore. Yeah, imagine that there. on your arm where you can't put it away. <laughs> right. No, I kind of feel the same way. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I love a good tattoo. It it really does. It's the thing. But my whole thing is, and I'm, I'm not the best to explain it, but you date yourself with some things. Like a really good tattoo is timeless. But some of the stuff, whether it's a lower it's back, it's fads or something. Right? Back, if it's a lower back tattoo of a tribal designer, if it's the Bob Wire band, I can tell you how old you are. Oh, oh like I was saying, the <laughs> yeah. devil. Or around here, it's if you have the Celtics guy. <laughs> if you have the Celtics oh. guy on your calf, you're basically between 55 and 60 at this point. Yeah, but the bright side is that uh, fads come in and out every 25 years or so. So you'll be popular every 25th year. That's good. There you go. When they just figure out aging, you know, you'll be around for it, you know. Kristen asks if a sweet potato is easier to carve um, than a pumpkin flesh. And it's, I, don't, it, I don't think so. I, I think pumpkins are easier. I don't like carving sweet potatoes at all. But these butternut squashes, I think, are easier because yeah. they have the solid base at the bottom. Like, So if you flip it over and you're looking at it like it's a regular old monstrous butternut squash, yeah. this part up here is generally solid, which you don't yeah. get with pumpkin, which gives you a ton of options if you want, if you really want to flip it upside down. Like I'm, I'm just about into the center of this thing right now, and mm. it's solid. It gives you so much more options for depth. You know what I mean? So yours is up. So you started upside down is what you're saying. Because your yeah, stem is at the like bottom. Do, I like to do them upside down because they have that. Some of them do, not all of them. But this one has a good flare at the bottom. So you still yeah. can kind of get a jawline. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. My 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 guy, I kind of wanted to do. Luckily, this one was, as you can see from the back, it kind of had that really stout look already. Let me see if I can mm. get a good shot of it. It was already, it wasn't too, you know, like a, a light bulb. It was just already pretty straight. So I knew all this was just a rock. And then down here is where the, the little cavity where the seeds are. So when I started trying to get what his he was going to look like, I still had room for like his bandana and stuff like that in there. Yeah, that bandage is looking pretty badass too. It stands out pretty good. Yeah, you know what's cool is this is really close to the edge of the flesh, which is is this part. And so if you just peel a little tiny bit away, it's it's very, very white. I'll show you. Yeah, there's a lot you of color. Like, it peels just a little bit of it away. It's nice and white. And the deeper you go, it gets more and more this orange kind of darker color. Like, uh, yep. Stay uh, stay in focus. But, yeah, it's, um, That's the it's other kind of fun because this stayed white. There's a lot of contrast in these in this kind of squash. It's true. The deeper you go, the darker it gets. It it gives you a lot more shadow than than you would think you would get from it. I don't know. They're pretty uh pretty versatile, especially for for uh, practice reasons. Yeah, you know, for the big pumpkins. And it forces it forces me to 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 get my detail smaller, which is I'm gonna feel cool like because I, on the big pumpkins, I feel I'll feel cheating. I'll be like. When I when I finally get a big one in front of me, I'm like, oh. I'm gonna feel like I need bigger tools. Say it again. I've learned to use my 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 normal pumpkin carving tools on these squashes. I'm gonna feel like I need bigger tools for a bigger pumpkin. That's true. You know what I mean? That's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. But as you say, because these things are so deep, especially at the the top. I'm yeah, kind of spoiled. I'm I'm not looking forward to uh, the pumpkins necessarily because you've only got you know two or three inches, where at least you've got much much more. I agree. But I'm gonna I'm gonna break through the first two or three pumpkins. I just know I am. And I'm gonna do the yeah, opposite. It, go too shallow. Yeah. Well, the thing the thing about it's all about freshness. To me, it's like if you get early pumpkins in September, you know they're just been picked. I mean they're 
so thick. It's like just, I don't know, just beautiful. I've been told I'm weird about pumpkins and, and that's one thing I, I I do find them just like, so like that time of year and just, I get so damn excited that they're available again. And anyway, I'll <laughs> stop before I start crying in front of all you people. <laughs> you really love your uh, fruit. There are uh, worse. What's that? Uh, I was just saying there's worse hobbies. Yeah, there is. So yeah. let me, so let's let's touch base on this for a minute. How do we? What do we think the Halloween season is going to be? Do we think there's even going to be one? I, mean, I think got, kids will trick or treat. I think there'll be. I think there'll be a smattering of parties around, but it's it's going to be different. I I don't think for us for carvers it's going to be um, on very much. I mean, think about all of the pumpkin patches and big social gatherings where there's lots of people. Um, you know, that's going to be really hard. I imagine. To do. I'm going to credit my brother with this concept, but he was talking about making a uh, a big tree, like a you know a dead Halloween tree, maybe a couple of tombstones in front, and then hang the candy off the branches so that the kids can come up and not you know there's no COVID exposure with everybody digging into the same bowl. You you can come up and pick it off the tree, no contamination, hmm. and move along. So it's a good idea. Not bad good idea. Yeah, in your front yard do you have a giant tree in your front yard i think he was going to make one out of like pvc and styrofoam and wow so he could uh, do it up with that halloween look sort of like one of those trees out of a tim burton movie or something so you said this was your brother uh no it was my idea yeah oh it was your idea yeah, yeah good job oh, all right sorry right, geez <laughs> yeah my brother's a genius genius all of them. That's a. Oh, you got a bunch of brothers, yeah. Yeah. I'm a brother myself. So tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday, right? Actually, I made the mistake one time asking if it was Sunday, and it was Tuesday. How's that? <laughs> that's that's how these these days are going. But I yeah, tomorrow's Friday, so tomorrow starts the weekend, and I think pretty much at least where I live. You're not allowed to go anywhere. Most stuff is closed. Um, are you guys able to get out and go at least to a lake or do something fun? I am. I'm going to Lake Ossipi in New Hampshire. Great time. There you go. Yeah, we've, got three different. we've got a couple lakes around here. There's a nice big one just about three miles up the road. You can drop the kayak in, and there's a couple smaller lakes with the the paths around them, take the dog around or go for a run. So there, there's some That's nice cool. parks open up around here. And, you know, as long as you're moving or out in the water, you're, you're pretty safely not around anybody within six feet. So uh, Jeff, Jeff Walker had a question that you're probably going to get every single time you do a live broadcast. Ah, uh, so you might right. as well address it right now uh, and get it over. What got you into carving? Now you Let's go first. Go, uh, no, come on, people. All right, I'll go first. Um, what got me into it? I was sitting on my front porch with the, with my girls, all just you know doing normal Halloween, you know, jack o' lanterns, and then um, it turned into. I'm kind of a perfectionist at heart, so it turned into well, if I can do that, I can do and teeth, and if I can do teeth, I can do eyes, and then I started getting into like you know. Um, watching Ray Villafane and other people who were, you know, Picasso's at this. And then I started, you know, following a whole bunch of different sculptors, trying to get techniques and tools. That's why I've got like this crazy toolbox. that's full of, you know, all kinds of stuff um, that I've acquired that it's now worth more to me than, you know, most things, but it's just like all my tools all, and I got them all cordoned off and section, you know, the, the better ones that I like. And anyway, yeah, that's what got me into it. It's just, just trying to get better at it. Uh, while sitting on the front porch with my kids. I had to tug at the hot strings right at the end, man. He didn't. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, I had to summarize. I had to throw it in there, Hallmark Hopper. What about you, Paul? <laughs> Mine's pretty simple. I was laying on the couch with my wife. We were watching Outrageous Pumpkins, and I saw Villafane. And she said, you could probably do something like that. And I said, no, no way. That's ridiculous what he's doing. So 
it was almost like a challenge from my wife to see if I could actually do it. And there you go. And let, and now you won outrageous pumpkins with Ray mm -hmm. Villafane as a judge. I mean, what the this this is full circle, baby. It was a pretty cool experience to meet him. He was a pretty awesome dude to meet. Very nice guy. All the judges were like, extremely nice, super supportive. And yeah, whoever said don't meet, what are these? What's the saying? Don't meet your idols, or, you know what I mean? Because you'd be disappointed. True. He was the exact opposite. He was like, keep doing what you're doing, man. So, thanks, Frank. Cool. Thank you very much. Now, Jimmy, what about you? Same story. Uh, you know, Halloween's favorite time of year. Uh, did you know? Used to do the patterns on the pumpkins and a little bit of the more detailed patterns. But uh, you know, eventually you come across Villafane and a couple of those. Uh, you know, Dean Arnold uh, and frankly, you guys are in there too. Oh, stop. Like, I, I got to try this. Stop. And uh, so it's you know, try a couple of the tutorials and just go from there. Practice, practice, practice. Right. I agree. It's, it's, it really is just, you see something that you like and you're like, let me give that a shot. And then, you know, with us doing this, hopefully it's going to inspire somebody else with this being available online going forward that they can, you know, pause, go back, maybe take something that we said and be like, Oh, all right. Now I see what they're talking about. Cause I did that a lot too. I would watch some of Ray's stuff and some of the other carvers on these shows and I would pause it just to see where they were at. You know, sometimes the, the editing sucks on those shows. So it's like, they'll go, they'll show one thing where they're just starting it. And then 10 seconds later, it's almost done. And then the next shot is they're just starting it again. But that might be where you see that one shot where they, oh, all right. See, I see where he was at right there. That was the part that was missing for me. Yeah. I'm a very visual. Yeah, so, so Jeff, uh, who asked that question, we want to see your first attempt of it uh you gotta share it with us eventually and, and by the way my first attempts I, I wouldn't even to share with you know myself anymore i'd be too embarrassed it, so it takes it takes a while luckily pumpkins you can just turn around use the other side or keep trying so it's not it's a it's a pretty easy medium to get into um mm -hmm. there's a question that just came up what was your craft before pumpkins and i think what's they're asking wade? what's up wade wade's a badass yeah dude. i think i think i think the, i think he's is he asking uh specifically what do you do outside of carbon pumpkins or do you think it was uh, what mediums you know what? Maybe both could always answer both and cover all bases um, let's do that i for me i i sell software so i um certainly this is a, just a hobby um other things i've carved i've carved uh, i've done metal work and some wood and stuff like that but just really found my love with these but uh yeah um clay a few few other things but no real other um craft beyond uh just just a bunch of practice yeah and i've always done i i can i can draw a little bit i was always able to draw um lots and of by the way when he just said when he says drawer that means just draw d-r-a-w there's no r at the end usually so just so hey, you guys know that's um can we just clarify something so there's no more confusion where did the pilgrims land they didn't land in Arizona, all right? This is the original accent, okay? There was a, oh, one, gotcha. there was a R in drawer. We take it off the oh, end of some words, and we put it into other words. So we don't really lose it. We just move it around. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Sorry. Go, go, I, I, I digress. Uh, yeah, no. So I would draw. Draw. Is that how you say it, bro? Yeah. Sure. I would draw in a lot of clay. I've always liked, you know, making sculptures out of clay. Usually I would use like Sculpey or something. So I have a ton of Sculpey stuff all over the house. All over the house, Hapa. Ah, Hapa. That's right. I don't even know in my name. Don't make me come out of the booth, Hapa. <laughs> You'll need a bigger boat. I'm coming out of the booth. So Jim, I'd say out of the three of us, you're the only one that's really into the three D. Like you're you're in the you're like in the future right now. Or the current, I guess. We're in the past. <laughs> yeah, even what I do is pretty much in the past. It's it's getting all AR and VR now. It's crazy out there. And wow, all my kids have that too. It's insane. You gotta love it. 
It is pretty off. I mean, it's it's impressive. So is that is that the next step, Jim? Is that what you're gonna head? You're gonna start doing that? Uh, I've toyed with it a bit, but uh, there's. Are you talking like 3D printing, or what do you? You're, well, I mean, I, you're talking about like the augmented reality. I I do uh, oh, wow. I do 3D animation. I've I also have done 3D printing, but it's it's getting into the augmented reality and the virtual reality, and I've I've played mm. with a little bit of both of those, just very very lightly touched on it so I can understand it. Um, you know, I've exported some of my, uh, you know, s some basic things into like Snapchat that you can use as an AR tool. Um, but there, there's a lot to it that can go a lot deeper and, and make it interactive. And, you know, it's, it's getting fun out there. That's so cool. Such a cool field. That's such a good thing you got into, man. Never too late. Just saying. I, I, you know, what's funny. My job, like my day to day, is I'm an MEP coordinator for, um, you know, the mechanicals. So my job is basically flying around the uh, video game. I fly around the virtual model all day. Nice. Hmm. So I'll be standing there, and what you know, somebody will ask to see something in the model for reference, and they'll go, "I'm getting motion sickness watching you fly through this thing." <laughs> <laughs> What does MEP stand for? Just because I don't know. Mechanicals, electrical, plumbing. Are those it's plans, for, plans for buildings? Okay. Right. So the, the, the buildings are now completely built virtually beforehand by the architects and the engineers. We get okay. the model, and then when the subcontractors get hired to do the work, when they submit their drawings, I put it into that virtual model and make sure they're not hitting okay. it or make sure that they're, you know, to spec and code and all that good stuff. It's like the world's most boring video game. <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, it, it really, the my artistic side is what got me into that aspect of the work anyway. I was hired as a mechanical coordinator for a sheet metal company in Boston based on the fact that I had some computer experience and could draw, literally. Mm. He said, I see you drawing pictures of guys on the job. You want to learn how to do CAD? <laughs> uh, and then the rest was history. But that's that's what the great stories are. Is uh, for me anyhow. It's it's a conversation I like to have with people. Is okay. You went to school for this, or you trained for this initially, and this many years later, you're doing this. How did you get from A to C? And it's stuff like that uh, that you know sort of takes you on different paths. That's really interesting. It really all starts with uh, there's usually a good person behind the story, too. Like one of my old bosses was the one that kind of saw something in me on the artistic side and was like, you see things a little bit different than everybody else. So why don't we see where this can go? That's I really awesome. want him. Get him on the phone. Get him on the phone. He's retired. He ain't picking up my phone calls anymore. He's done. It's like. No, enough already. And we had him already. Okay. Yeah, right. What is this kid? We doing? don't need him. No more Paul. Don't answer. So now Matt. Let's, can we, oh, yes, sir. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, uh, I, I think it's, I don't know what we've got left, a little bit of time, 45 minutes. Um, so we're, I'm down to the point in this thing where I'm doing a lot of like detail work up. I guess I can, I can show you what I've done so far. And where I still have to do, um, only because for me, I look at it, and and you guys probably think the same way. It's never finished. And I had a I had a professor tell me one time that sculpture is never finished. It's it's only abandoned. So I, I like that because you have to walk away with from it one sometime, or you just keep you just kill it. Um, that said, so I've got I'm starting to get his mustache kind of put in here. You guys can see that, okay? Um, I'm gonna keep working on his band-aid so it looks, you know, a little bit more band-aid-y. And I got some stitches going on over here and a little hat and some eyebrows and wrinkles. But my favorite part of this is is getting like the wrinkles in and then kind of sanding it down with one of these Brillo pads to keep it skin tone or skin like, you know. Mm -hmm. Um it always it always roughs knocks down all those little rough marks you did with the tool. 
and um, it kind of makes it really look nice. Um, trying to get the expression right and get all these little creases and stuff. Uh, if I need to make any seismic changes right now, I'm kind of I'm already kind of down the road. I I probably have to do something drastic. But if I wanted to change anything dramatic, like in other words, close his mouth or open that eye or you know do do other things, I would just have to. So at this point, I'm kind of done. I kind of sailed that ship a little bit, so I don't have much more I can do. But so my oh, final goal was just to kind of make his mouth look a little bit more realistic, his tongue, his eyes, that kind of thing, get some more wrinkles in there, and then start taking some pictures. Because at the end of the day, that's the only uh, thing that really preserves these things. That's it. You take a it's picture camera. on the table. Right. So, so how, I was going to say, Paul, how's your going to do, do a, a little uh, check of what you what you got left with forty five minutes? Sure, why not? Well, I get to a point and then I'm uh, ridiculously slow because, like Matt said, I love to add a lot of wrinkles and details around the eyes, and I could just work on it for about another four or five hours, honestly. But what I did, <laughs> I tried to focus on really getting those teeth. Wow. In there. And um, starting awesome. to starting to work on the expression around the eyes, and really trying to, you know, pull one pull one up, push one down, that whole thing. Mm. And um, that's awesome. I think I think if we want to, if we really want to finish, I'm pretty sure I can, uh, I could take it out of second gear, and try and drive it home by the end of this. I'm pretty sure I could finish this and get enough detail into it. Hey, it's episode one. We got We got to pull all the stops, baby. Dude, I can make, make it happen. happen. I can make it happen. <laughs> now, Jim, on the other hand, is uh, attempting a chimpanzee. Oh, actually, it's coming along pretty nicely. Attempting a chimpanzee from scratch. Yeah, he started when the show started. So he's behind but yet ahead because it's looking very chimp-like. He's getting there. I've, I've got uh, the forms slowly roughing in, getting all the shapes and the, the depth that I want. To, you know, I'm leaving this part of the mouth in because he's uh, – I mean, get my reference here. He's, uh, you know, sticking his lips out. Oh. Like that. So I've got to thin it out here, and then I can go in and cut that out as a, as the last thing I'm going to do, and and get the lips final. Yeah. I, I don't want them. I don't want that material gone. So if I'm pressing on it, it breaks through downward. So yeah. I'm going to get everything, right you know, the form all the way done, and then when I get down to details, that's going to be the last thing is to pull the mouth out. But uh, you know, he's. He's starting to get his form. I can go a little deeper here in the cheeks and start getting some of the wrinkles and you know the bigger wrinkles in and and get that shape in. But he's getting there. Looks good, man. Appreciate Let's it. What's up to Dave? What's up, Dave Pierce, my, the great singer of my band. Oh, nice. Yeah. We'll have him on and do a few bars next time. He will. He'll tear some harmonica up. See, now it's crunch time. Now the conversation gets quiet and the men go to work. Yeah. <laughs> so Je Jeff asked a great question, too. You guys probably get asked this a lot. What do you put on them so they can last and how long do they last? I put a filter on it and take a picture <laughs> of it and then never look at it again. Yeah. For me, for me, the only thing I can get them to do to last is, um, yeah, I do the same thing. I photograph it immediately and then um, – I put a wet paper towel over it, put it in a plastic bag with some water, try to suck the air out, and at least so that way it's got it's hydrated. And I put it in the fridge. And that and that that if I need to have it for the next day, that's the only way I can get it to uh to stay because it's a piece of produce when you think about it, right? So it's it's you you're you're trying to do that. A big pumpkin, I just don't have room in my fridge, so just use that camera. Um and just try to keep it if you have to if you're making one for somebody, um you guys both have probably gotten commissions a number of times where you, you, you make it the day before and mm -hmm. uh, when you and you got to have it ready the next day or you know and you only have a certain amount of time because we both we all have jobs um so i've done the, that same thing just kept it wet put it in a cooler outside or you know because it starts it gets a little cooler here even um and just just again refrigerate it and keep it wet that's the only thing you really can do and then let it dry out and throw it away. 
or eat it, of course, because that's the right thing to do, eat it. Good question, though. I don't think there's much else you can do. I know some people try to preserve them, you know, in salt and stuff like that to just to dehydrate them. But uh, I've never tried any of that. It's, and yeah, I know, Paul, you guys, you put them in uh, in casks or uh, what do you put them in? Like a, a vessel of some sort with vinegar? And he's not answering. But yeah, that's that's common too. People will take a big vessel of some sort, a glass jar, put it in, put it in vinegar. Vinegar with just a spoonful of sugar. Really? White vinegar with a spoonful, yeah. What, what's with the why sugar? Couldn't tell you. I, I don't know if that's a pickling preservative type thing. But oh, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe there's like some active uh, thing going on. Okay. I've I've just done it a few times with some potatoes, and they I've had them in uh, jars for you know six eight months. Huh. But part of the process is understanding that this is fleeting and it's not forever. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, if absolutely you much time in it and expecting it to be around in two years, uh, don't hold your breath. Yeah. Why did I drop out? Hey, I don't know. It's your deal, I guess. Hey, do you, do you have any uh, around you that you've, you um, like right behind you? Yeah. So we were just talking about putting them, pickling them. So you've got one kind of, sitting in a jar right now, right? And he's frozen. See, people? I blame the internet on most things, but this is, this is silly. Technical, technology is great until you need it. So again, pilot episode, I think this is the time we want to get these little kinks worked out. But uh, any other questions? I mean, we've got the gallery out there still. looks like there's still a good amount of people. Um, happy to answer any other questions as much as I can. To, you know, to some extent. I actually okay. got a question for you, Jim. Um, I was when, when you, you <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, how about it? Where did you get your tools? Where Where's your favorite spot to get tools? And what are your favorite tools? So there's a couple of places. I've there's a place up in Phoenix called Reynolds, and it's a uh, it's a, a sculpture supply place where they have all the smooth on stuff, you know. Um, and they have some really cool tools. My favorite tools are the little um uh, let's see if i can hold this up correctly so i'll pull it back here here i don't know well it's not going to focus very well but so this is a a small triangle tool that's made out of a a little piece of uh flat steel and then just bent into a shape and you can get some really cool detail in here if you can see like i can get the you know really good detail these are this they sell these as a pack um and they're made by um, Kemper. And then there's like bigger versions like this that are a lot stronger. Yeah, yeah. Like that. And then I've got tons of little knives and you know various shapes for knives, all kinds of different scrapers. And my favorite things lately have been these. It's kind of hard to see. So this is like a, a very thin version of it, but it's got serrations, serra serrated, serrated little cuts out of it. Yeah. So when you pull down, it's not pulling in the shape. It's kind of like a rake. It's like a little rake under it. Can you hold so that, that makes little. Can you hold that between your uh, squash and the light there with the black background, so we yeah. can. Yeah. Or maybe this will. No, with. Um... Um, oh, black background. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Can you blow them up? Is that better. Nice. Nice. Yeah, and it's just a little tiny. This is also a Kemper tool, I think, but uh, it's just a little tiny guy. Um, and it and it's delicate, so I break a lot of them, and it really makes me sad. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is this is what it is. It's like that 
It's got that little tiny rake serrations, just the way this thing does. Hang on, I'll show you another big one. So this, this is. Did you put it in there? Uh, I, those came with it, but you can you can get the same tool and cut them in. So you see how this this thing has like little almost serrated lines there. Yeah. Like there's a good version of it there. Nice. Same teeth. principle. Yeah, it's got teeth, and when you scrape like that, it's 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 pulling it away, but it's in in those lines, so you're not pulling big chunks off. It's yeah. like and this is just a mini, mini version of that. Nice. Like it. Paul turned me onto these things. Um, they're little brass semicircles of various sizes, and they're perfect for eyes. You know, you can get a nice, perfect. Uh, I'm blocking the camera, but you can get a nice, perfectly round shape in there. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Yeah. So up to, it's, up to it's a certain a, size, though, they still have yeah. limitations. Yeah, you, you end up having to still get in there and do some manual removal. But uh, oops, still. Now, you, last time we were on, you had some, sh you had a sharp, uh, some kind of exacto, right, Jim? Or was it just yeah, a fresh blade? Yeah, just a uh, basic. Oh, there you go. But then you, you know, also this thing, which is yeah, I got one of those. Yeah. Because it's super thin. I mean, that's just paper thin to get in. That's from the kit, right? From Ray's kit. Oh yeah. yeah. That's the uh, triangle. I think's the the kind. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. Yeah, Ray Ray's kit is awesome. I I broke a few of those tools though, and I got to buy a whole new kit, so I'm very delicate with those. But yeah, these these are really strong. Also, going back a step, you were talking about some of the tutorials online. Uh, I'd like to put a shout out for like uh, Sculpture Geek. And yeah, 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 yeah. Your kids. And uh, Brandy Davis have some really nice uh, time lapse and and uh, you know tutorial sculpts out there on YouTube. So uh, I've oh. also used those for inspiration and you know learning. I agree. Yeah, actually, that's two good, really good people you mentioned. Uh, Sculpture Geek. So he does those. The, um, you can actually buy some of them too. Like he he has um, clay tutorials that you can buy. Yes. With a pumpkin on too. The Brandy's, yeah, Brandy's was one of the one of the ones I used to use to try and figure out. Like I could stop the time lapse and just figure out what how how she did that. Her Joker. Oh my God, the Kung Fu Panda one was like insane. True. True. Yeah, there's, there's some skill out there. You gotta love it. Yeah, they're good people. Yeah, that's what I found with this this community. There's no there's no egos. You know, it's it's just a bunch of people just excited that there's more people doing it. You know, it's um it's a lot of fun that way. There's not because I I get I get so self deprecating on this stuff and I get upset and I see people uh, I see people um, you know killing it just absolutely leaps and bounds above my skill level and but um but they but no one no one's really pretentious that i've met yet i'm sure there are i'm sure they are out there but. i'm sure there's one or two uh, i'm a rookie and everybody i've come across has just been incredibly supportive so i've i've got nothing bad to say about the community give it time <laughs> yeah you haven't met paul yet oh wait yeah he actually he has and we talked about how oh yeah you're right shut up <laughs> <laughs> well, they say that there's always a butthead in the group, and if if you don't know who it is, then it's you. So I guess right. I'm filling that void. Then you're welcome. Yeah. Good point, Jim. <laughs> Thanks for doing that for us. Thanks. Thanks for taking the heat. I want to contribute. One for the team. So, so Kevin had a question. Uh, what do you do with these things uh, when they're done and deteriorate? And have you, uh, uh, Jeff Walker asked, have you ever done wax sculptures? So there's two to on. Oh my god. Monster clay is I've, pretty much wax, right? So Yeah. So I would say, yeah, if you consider monster clay a wax because it does have wax in it, then I've I've sculpted it cold, which would be like wax. And then when it when you the same way you would sculpt wax, you would kind of feed it in soft to the sculpture. So yes to that and to the what do I do with them when they're done? 
I have five chickens that really enjoy squash. <laughs> we, have, awesome. we have some deer out back that enjoy it. Oh, and actually, Matt, you have the best. You have the best animals. Yeah, we got javelina, and um, although it is it is completely legal and immoral to feed wildlife, one time we did leave them out in the back and uh, found that they had really enjoyed them. Put it that way. There was a. Uh, is that like a? What is that? The. Yeah, a wild pig, but it's like a peccary, so it's like it's uh, smaller than a than a boar, you know. Uh, it's smaller than a pig, but it they're re really got very coarse gray and black hair and some really mean teeth. Yeah, and they yeah, smell they mean. They smell real bad. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you another funny trivia thing. So my, the name of my band is called Musk Hog, M-U-S-K-H-O-G. And that's uh -huh. another name for a javelina because they, they're so smelly. They just like have this terrible musk that comes off of them. Um, and you can smell them before you can see them. I mean, like we'll walk in the backyard and uh, over the fence, you can just catch a waft of them and uh, you're like, oh, there they are. Uh, and they're everywhere, right? Out here, yeah, This they're uh, very prolific. Coyotes, you know, lots of those guys. They're good little, good little friends. Good little friends. And the cutest thing, I mean, around the spring, it, it, you, you wouldn't think they're very cute, but they'll have a, a, a couple of babies and they're about the size of um, a big guinea pig, you know, and they just, are, you, you almost want to pick it up and, you know, give it a good squeeze, but you know, the mom would probably would not, not accept that, but just adorable little things with their umbilical cords hanging down. And, what? Yeah, it's wild. They're cute little buggers <laughs> google it google it you know it's it's wonderful i'm gonna have to google that one the cute little umbilical cords hanging down i may never forget you said that <laughs> that was amazing that'll be my next carve please uh tip your yeah javelina you should do a javelina mr javelina mr bald javelina speaking of that have you guys i've done a few animals in my uh time and you're doing a chimp right now what uh if you've carved animals what's your favorite one to carve besides just doing human faces paul we'll throw it to you wow way to throw it out there at the guy that really just does human faces no i um i like doing werewolf, like wolves oh yeah yeah yeah. okay and that's kind of my thing but uh I, th I think i've done a frog too and i've done a shark and, uh, i've done a couple things over the years Nothing. I mean, if I see anything that interests me is really what I want to carve. If I see something that's, you know, what I mean, something that catches your eye, it's like, all right, I'm going to try yeah. that. Yeah. And sometimes the shape of what you're carving just speaks to you more than anything, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I've had yeah, I've had pumpkins that I'm like, what the hell is that? And I look at it in a certain light or whatever. I'm like, oh my god, that's an elephant. You know, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, and it's it completely just speaks to you. I agree. Uh, and, a lot, and a lot of times when it speaks to me, it doesn't say rhinoceros. It says face. just a face. face. Put a face on it. I mean, I, I can do it. I, you know, maybe maybe that'll be one of the uh, challenge nights. We'll have to do animals. That's Gym, right. Gymnast doesn't count towards that. Oh, yeah, exactly. You got to start over. <laughs> what if I? Yeah. Go so hey. Let, oh. I was I was just gonna throw this out there, Jen. Feel free to answer too. I what do you guys think about like future shows? I I I definitely want to have more carving, but we got amazing cake people. We got other artists. There are uh, good friends of ours, uh, musicians, painters, uh, other sculptors from other mediums. What, what do you guys think? What's your what's a cool uh, other art form to throw into this? I think any greatest part of carvers and creators. I think that's that's really um it's a good it's a good question. And I think what we should do is really try and push that envelope and try and invite on once a week somebody from different genres, different uh mediums. You know what I mean? Cool. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I've uh... I, I would absolutely love to see some of those like kitchens, like you know, Kristen's or 
um, Beth that I was on the show with. I mean, just just the, the way that they think is so uh, – it just boggles my mind. I just – I'd love to just see see their workspace, you know, hear about what they're doing and how they do it. That's really cool stuff. Sorry, I jumped in there, Jim. No, no, I'm, I'm just agreeing. And uh, I've, uh, you know, again, a lot of the pumpkin carvers have other talents. Some go with the the wood, the logs, the the chainsaws, but there's a lot of them who do the uh, the baking and the culinary. And uh, I've played based on some of the things I've seen with uh, uh, modeling chocolate on race yeah. and some of the, that sculpting. And that's a whole lot of fun too. So mm -hmm. it's a lot more practical. You can eat it. It's, yeah, it's you know birthday cakes become uh, you become popular throughout the year as opposed to just Halloween. But yeah. uh, I would I would definitely be uh, up for learning some more of that. Good point. Actually, that's good. Again, I can't make a cake without screwing it up. But I would love to. I would love to have somebody on and. See it. See how they do it. A hundred percent. Another another fun topic that just popped into my mind is, I I over COVID have been abusing my liver, and my abusing of choice has been like different whiskeys and rye and stuff like that lately. And I just have been getting into it. And and I know you guys like craft beer. Mickey's a big craft beer fanatic, like you, Paul, and. Um, I, I'd be fun to kind of have be part of. We, again, it's not it's not art, but it's certainly interesting stuff. Uh, what people are into, uh, uh, at least booze wise lately, because I think that's uh, certainly universal or pretty. At least in my house, I, I take that back. With with me, I don't think my, my wife isn't, but uh, you know, I think it's got to get the craft in it, so. Wait. Say it again, Paul. Are you trying to get free booze? Like no, no, no. I just, just, uh, just, just, just to talk about it. All right. That's how you're trying to get and if they happen to send a send a really good couple bottle, I'm I'm not going to turn it away. Okay. Okay. I see where you're going. You're picking up what you're throwing down, there, buddy. I mean, I gotta I gotta send Mickey out some treehouse. Maybe I'll have to send you out some treehouse as well, so you guys can get a taste of the good life in the Northeast. You know. <laughs> You guys pitching for sponsors already, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, show one, and we can't we can't stop ourselves. I would I would also say that um, a lot of your guests are from around the country, so it would be really interesting to hear like you know the different craft oh, breweries yeah. are around there. Um, some of the drinks, like you sure. know, uh, I, I mean whiskey and and all those um, all those types of things. Like people are into different vodkas. It would be fascinating to hear other. You know, this is a part, it seems like this is a really casual thing. So really relax and just having a drink and, and watching is, is, uh, could be part of it. And if you get a few, uh, few brews here and there shipped to you, that's good. Right. Right. <laughs> so now Maddie, I'll dip into the brass rods as we, that we spoke about. Now we're going to eyes. We're going to eyes, people. We're going DEF CON 5. It's eye time. Uh -oh. It's Seven minutes. Oh, that's right. Wow. I, the, the one thing about this format that is just fun is that there's actually a clock ticking. If anybody that is watching has been on other versions where Paul and I or any of us, we've done like uh, Zooms and it's kind of open ended and people come and go and, you know, they leave, for, go have dinner, come back and we're still at it, talking it up. Um, but the fact that this has got a time limit, it kind of makes you stay focused. It's kind of cool. It is pretty cool. I do like it. Are we going to uh, tag uh, final images on the end of this? Yeah, 100%. Edit it. Well, you know what we can do? Mickey, can we, um, af after this is all said and done, before we put it up on, um, well, when we put it up to YouTube, we could probably add the finished images to the end of the um, episode. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is going live, so um, we can do uh, if we were recording, we could do it at the end. But we, I can also do a follow up video uh, that has all of them on there. So uh, right. I'll just plan that in the in the future, just to have that, you know, just add to it all because it's it's really fascinating to see this and kind of see where it all goes. 
Cool. Thank you. Okay, let's go here. Yeah, it's it's always quiet time when we get around the eyes. I swear, I, <laughs> I good little lulls because it's like the. So Jeff, for me, any, any sculpture that's the that's the, the eyes, the key to the soul, right? Or what do you call it? Jeff asked a great question, which was, "When is the next episode?" And I wanted to kind of bring that up too. Do we have another night of the week that works better for everybody? You know what I mean? Uh, Thursday is good. I, I just on the being on the West Coast, I've noticed that um, I don't get as much. Um, I don't get as much. Um, you know, probably on the on the West Coast because it's it's only now four twenty six. Right. Um, some people are probably still working, but I mean, maybe we could go an hour later or something like that. Keep it on Thursdays or. If we can keep, if, yeah, for you guys. If we want to keep it on Thursdays, I would suggest an hour later, just because. I have um, previous engagements, if you will. Wait, wait, you? Okay, I'm fine. Man, it's just the Paul show. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect for me. Perfect for me too, Paul. If that works for you, let's go a little early. Later, not earlier. I mean, I'm sorry. Later, did I say early? Yeah. I was, Get I was doing the eye. I was just doing the eye here. Yeah, you want to do that? We'll do uh, seven o'clock instead of six. That actually probably works good on both coasts, I'd say, for time of watching. Yeah, right? four. Is that better? Yeah. Four o'clock. I think so, Jeff. Since you've been asking some questions, how about you? You tell us. Does four o'clock work better for you, sir? Good point. It's, you know, throw it to the audience. I mean, they're the ones who they're the ones paying to be here. Dang. Or wait, no. Okay. Good one. Yeah, if if anybody has wants to chime in on that, feel free. We're kind of open. This is it's a good subject to bring up now. We got a couple minutes left. Got a few minutes. Can you Three minutes. Just like that episode one. It's just about in the books. And I knew it was I mean, when I say just about done, I mean not even close, but yeah, I'll be done enough. Same here. You can never be done. So this was great. Thanks, everybody that was watching, first of all. And, Heck yeah. Uh, well, I know, I know we're in the process of getting up and running on our YouTube page, which is where all of this stuff will be posted forever. Make sure you like and subscribe over there and let us know what you want to see. Yeah, I didn't I used to make fun of people who said like and subscribe, but I I see why they do it now. You get you guys get notifications when the shows are gonna be on and the topics and stuff like that's beforehand if you subscribe, so do that. Should we have like what do we got? A minute, two minutes left? We'll do one last one last review of what we got, what we made today, and then we'll oh. uh Take some final pictures, post them on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, feel free to get, ask us questions offline too. People send me really cool requests of things to make, so feel free to do that and maybe throw an idea for a future show or something to carve because we'll do it. What else are we going to do? Good point. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're basically homebound without the ankle bracelet, so... <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, nobody asked right. Jim to the angle bracelet on. <laughs> sure. And we got we know he you need we know he does. You villain. All right, see if I can get good light on this guy here. It's better. All right, so here's where I'm finishing, at least close to it. Why is my I guess I'm not in very good um There you go. There we go. That's Great. better, huh? Okay. Okay. So there's my guy. A little work to still do. Clean him up, but uh, he's got a nice big black eye. He's got some bandages, little hair coming out of his little bandana, his tongue, some busted teeth, and a double chin. Kind of everything. It kind of looks like me. <laughs> Show's yours, Paul. There we go. <laughs> 
I'm That's working good. on it. It's a work in progress, but it's basically me. It's basically me. I don't know. Um... <laughs> That's really good. I like it. Thanks. It's getting there. I think if I add enough wrinkles, I'll be good. I don't know, man. I'd love it smooth. It, it looks like the mask, you know, or it has that kind of like quality, you know, from the movie, the mask. Yeah. You, well, it's good lighting. Um, that's, there's, a lot, okay, that's, there's a lot of tool marks to be reckoned with and a lot of um, stray stray strands of butternut squash I got to clean up. Got Once it. it's done, I think it'll be okay. Okay. And let's take one last look because we're at the top of the hour. Or the oh, okay, so we got we got room to go. Obviously, but you can clearly that's that's dude, that's badass. I'm really yeah, liking it. I can't wait to see the finish. Heck yeah! So let's thank. I want to thank Mickey, um, thank Jim, and apologize because uh, I know we had another guest uh, that uh, had some connection issues, but we'll we'll certainly get him back. Um, yeah, next we'll episode. We'll get Dan back on this thing. And then, uh, but Mickey, thank you so much for hosting us. And uh, and Paul, excellent work today, as always. What was, hold on, Jim. what was the, what was the uh, disco name again? Uh, disco disco machine. machine, look it up. That, uh, that, that I'd like to thank dead. Disco Machine. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. No, that guy's Google dead. that, you guys, yeah. Google that. You have he to. passed away a long time ago. The man. Um, so, so this is Carvers and Creators. Um, uh, if you look up on YouTube, there'll be a Carvers and Creators uh, YouTube page. Uh, we're also on Twitter, Carvers, uh, Carvers Creators. Uh, we're also on Twitch, uh, and we have an Instagram. So we'll get that all coordinated, and, and uh, definitely uh, Matt and Paul will definitely uh, float all that information out. Um, did you say that you're going to be doing this next week um, at the same time or different time? Did you guys ever determine that? I think we're going to shift an hour later. Yeah, we're going to start a little bit later. It gives everybody uh, the perfect time to settle in. Yeah, and by that time, we'll, we'll have all of our social media accounts up and running, and then you guys can share them, and obviously through your personal uh, per, uh, social networks. Uh, Paul, uh, did you have anything that you wanted to plug? Uh, no, I don't want to plug it. I'm, we're, we're on it. We're on the plug. That's it. I'm good, man. I mean, we got to play. Well, I want to plug the Bear and Baseball blog. Is what I want. The, that's what I want. To. Oh, Me too. well, th thank you for that. Yeah, I, I do a uh, Beer and Baseball uh, blog. Uh, it's every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Uh, actually, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. We go live and we just talk about beer and baseball. Uh, because of the pandemic, uh, there's no baseball this year. There, there's a season, but I'm not too happy about it. Uh, I like going out and going and, and tasting craft beers and baseball. So uh, you can check me out at, at Beer Baseball on any of the social media, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube especially. We're trying to grow that just like this. Um, and uh, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. This has been absolutely fascinating. And, and I love what Jim did because it went from nothing to something. Like you can see it in there. It's ready to come out. And uh, sure. Matt's always looked so awesome. I mean, he, he came in. He came in hot. Yeah, you guys both came in hot with all, <laughs> with your de he that de de detail. So, Matt, did you have anything that you wanted to plug? No, I'm. I'm this is this is so fun to do this, Mick. Thank you so much. I'm, um, you know, we people who uh, joined us, I thank you, um, and and we'd love, love to do it again. And again, any feedback you can give us about it makes it better. And thank you. And we'll we we'll have tons more creators and carvers to, to come. And, New and guests thank you every to week. Yeah. And th thank you, Jim, for joining. Uh, it was a pleasure to watch you work and, and uh, uh, fascinating to know that your 3D background is actually, I mean, to, to, to work in 3D is, is difficult enough on the computer. I know that. So to do this and you do both of them. So that's, that's absolutely fascinating. So great work. Well, again, thank you for hosting and uh, thanks for having me here and everybody stay safe. Jimmy, All pleasure right, as so always. We will see you next Thursday at 5 p.m is that what we decided will be 4 p.m your time 7 p.m my time perfect yeah perfect so we got the co we got the coasts covered we got each side of the country all wrapped up right on and then we'll fill in with the midwest and you have it all covered so Sounds this is carvers perfect. and creators uh please like and subscribe uh and uh help us grow and uh these guys will be doing it every week so we will see you next time goodbye now see you